Are you in Papua New Guinea and wondering what's for dinner? Well, it could be a lot of things. They got a pretty diverse array of food plants here. So let's take a look at a few of them and help you figure out what's on your plate. To start off with, a nut. One from the Terminalia genus. Now, nuts and nut-like fruits are a pretty popular group of foods here in the Highlands, partly just because the diet tends to be otherwise pretty low in protein, other than a few exceptions that I've talked about in other videos. So anyway, when nuts are in season, they tend to be quite popular. Unfortunately, this one isn't in season, but let's talk about it anyway. You'll notice these trees have an unusual branching pattern, with the branches coming out kind of in a big horizontal ring around the trunk, and then a few feet up another smaller ring, and then at the end of each branch as well, the leaves will grow in sort of a little whirl. And the result, as you can probably tell from the lighting in this part of the video, it's a pretty good shade tree, and it's also pretty good for sheltering you from the rain, which is why a lot of birds like this tree. So there's two main species of Terminalia grown here in Papua New Guinea. They're one called Okari and one called Talis. And I'm pretty sure this one is a Talis. It's weird because it's growing at like double the altitude they'd normally grow at, but they call it a Talis and it looks like a Talis, so I'm assuming it's a Talis. And as I mentioned here, the edible part is the nut. And it looks a lot like an almond. You can crack it and eat it much the same way and it's got kind of a similar nutty flavor to it which unfortunately I haven't gotten to taste because it's out of season. This plant also has some medicinal uses. Recent research has shown some potential anti-diabetic activity in some chemicals found in the seeds, although it's important to bear in mind that that was from a very concentrated extract from the seeds, a much higher dose than you would get from typically just eating the seeds straight. Other research has shown that extracts from the leaves look to be fairly effective at helping the body regrow tissues around wounds and helping the wound to close up faster as well. There's a number of other effects being investigated, and so I'm gonna put a link to the summary of the findings so far in the description. But anyway, a good little nut when it's in season, and potentially good medicine as well. Next up, some greens. A very wilted Ibica. Now, they, they often come like this when you get them from the market and then store them in the fridge for a bit. But these are a really interesting plant. So this is in the mallow family, which also includes hibiscuses, and it's in the same genus as okra, the vegetable, which is pretty obvious if you see the flowers, they look quite similar. Now these are a pretty common vegetable around these parts, which is understandable. They're very easy to grow, they've got nice big leaves, edible a lot of different ways. You can eat them raw, steamed, boiled, pit roasted, or sautéed, you name it really. And like a lot of the smaller edible mallows as well, they are quite nutritious very high levels of vitamin A and C in there. But the really interesting thing about these plants particularly, like a lot of the other mallows, they produce a lot of mucilage in them, which gives them kind of some specialty uses in cooking as well. If you've ever cooked with okra, you probably know if you don't do it right, you'll come up with a pretty slimy dish, and that's because of the mucilage there. If you use it right though, that mucilage can be put to good use using it as a thickening agent. So you put it into, say, soups or gravies or sauces or stuff like that, and it helps them become thicker and less watery. And eating things with a lot of mucilage tends to be good when you have a sore throat as well, because it helps kind of coat the mucus membranes in there and help protect them a bit from irritation. Now, because this plant produces a lot of mucilage, especially in the stems and the roots, its uses have come to extend beyond cooking as well. See, this plant is spread throughout a lot of Southeast Asia and East Asia as well. And in Japan and Korea, the mucilage is actually used to produce traditional paper. So this is a very simplified version of that process of making paper, but what's traditionally done is they take the bark from certain types of trees, process it with lye, and then break it down into fibers. Once that's been done, mucilage from this ibica root gets added in order to help suspend those fibers in the water evenly, and also to help bind them together. So that's how the paper is able to hold together, despite sometimes being so thin, because it has this binding agent in there. But that's just an interesting aside with these. On to the next one. Now this one I don't have a lot to say about because there's literally thousands of orchid species here and they can be very hard to identify and narrow down to a species and therefore find more information about. So if anyone could help me find a species name for this, I would be deeply appreciative on that. But this one has a couple practical purposes for people here. First, you can see it has these nice little orange flowers. They're not exactly in their prime right now, but you can imagine they look pretty nice when they are. So those ones are great for decoration. So the other purpose is these can be used for cooking. They're a bit tough to just eat straight, but they're great for using to wrap foods when doing a moo or pit roasting. Now, 
if you don't know how that works, that's basically where you take hot rocks and build a fire over them, get the rocks good and hot, and then when they are, you take the fire off of the top and all, all the wood and the embers, and you put leaves on top of these hot rocks and then start putting food items there, and then more leaves on top of that and bury the whole thing, cover it in dirt. And so the result is that you leave it there half an hour, maybe a few hours, and the food inside basically gets steamed. So putting leaves around these things, that helps, well first keep it clean from the dirt, but also it helps keep the moisture in, helps, helps things cook in their own steam basically, and keep them nice and juicy and tender. So general leaf wraps like that are pretty common, but some of them, like this one, will actually impart a flavor as well. And the flavor here isn't quite like anything else I've tasted. I would, well, maybe put it closest to something like black pepper, maybe hints of like the flavor of torch ginger flowers, although I don't know how many of my viewers will have tasted that, so that might not help. But anyway, it's a unique flavor that it's pretty good in its own way. So anyway, that's one of the many practical species of orchids here. Now these here are really interesting trees. They're in the genus Nothophagus, which are sometimes referred to as southern beeches, or the species here in PNG get called PNG oak. Now, despite being in the same genus as both beeches and oaks, the similarities aren't necessarily obvious to the untrained eye. Now, I used to make the mistake, and I, this is a common one, I think, of assuming that the flora and fauna here in New Guinea was just a lot like that in Borneo. But the two are actually very, very different. See, the flora and fauna here are a lot more like things you would find in Australia or New Zealand than anything you would find in Southeast Asia. And these Nothophagus trees are included in that. See, they're all native to New Guinea, Australia, New Zealand, parts of Melanesia, some even in the southern parts of South America, but generally all in the cooler, high altitude areas there, and that's about it. Now there's a lot of different species here, unfortunately none of them are in season right now so I can't show you fruit, but this one behind me isn't used for fruit anyway. This is known locally as the yomba, and it's a very important tree culturally, mostly for its timber. It does attract a lot of really big birds, it has a huge canopy, and lots of birds come to feed on it. Certain birds will reportedly fly over 100 kilometers just to these trees back from their villages in lines, so it's a very important plant ecologically as well. But what people know it for is for its timber. It's apparently a really strong timber and one that can be used over multiple generations. You can build houses with it and the timber should last 70 to even 100 years sometimes. So you may even have three generations of people all building their houses from the same wood and it'll still last throughout that time. Very useful stuff. So this tree over here, it's known locally as the lehefa. And this one is more as a food plant. The timber is a lot softer might last more like 10 to 20 years as opposed to 70 or 100 years. But the fruit is very good to eat. It makes a nut that tastes a lot like a peanut and can be just roasted in a pan over a fire. Very good for eating. That's about all the practical use I heard about for that one anyway. So a number of trees in this genus are also generally great places to find mushrooms. So these are great mushrooms. Most of them are edible here and they're great for people, for animals, and the fallen fruit too, that's good for animals. It attracts bandicoots, couscous, all sorts of things. So overall, this is a very important group of trees here in Papua New Guinea for a lot of different reasons, from the timber to the fruit to the role it plays in attracting birds. But that's all I have for this week. As always, if you have any corrections, suggestions, or passing remarks, or if you think one of these plants deserves its own full-length video, feel free to comment that down below. And if you enjoyed this or learned something and would like to see more, Liking and subscribing always really helps me out. This video is made on behalf of the Garoka Natural Habitat, a place looking to preserve a slice of Papua New Guinean highland forest for education, research, enjoyment, and to teach people to cultivate honey at the same time. A huge thank you to Kelly e and I for letting me stay here and supporting this project. If you're looking for a great place to volunteer as a researcher, carpenter, teacher, beekeeper, fish pond specialist, mushroom grower, or any of other numerous other specialties, this is a great place to do it. So for more practical and otherwise interesting tropical plants of Papua New Guinea, join me next time on Ambling with Sam.